What's up squad, it's your squid, aka the Anxious Squid, here at Anxious Squid Productions. This video is one for my motorsport playlist, it's another F1 focus video, but you already know that because you've seen the title or the thumbnail. These guys are my patrons, please consider becoming a patron. If you do it today, it's the best value for the month because it's the first. Uh, I like Patreon, I like money, money's cool. But let's get straight into the video, shall we? As always, squad, thanks for clicking back over here and watching this sort of stuff with me, watching my reactions. Couldn't do it without my viewership, so, you know, even if you're not subscribed, even if you're just watching these videos, you're the best. Thank you very much. Uh, F1 Pit Stop in two seconds, an in-depth analysis is the title of this video. If you want to watch it without me reacting to it and everything, the, the link will be in the description, so check that out as well. Uh, but yeah, my wife's favourite aspect of NASCAR and of motorsport, any motorsport we watch in general, uh, NASCAR, the Cup Series, is generally the, the stuff I watch motorsport related, but um, she's obsessed with the pit crews. You know, she calls them little elves. She thinks it's amazing how fast they go. I didn't realise that in the F1 they, did it in, they could do it in two seconds. So I'm excited to watch this because she'll watch my reaction to it and it will have a fun chat and it'll be fun. But yeah. Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome hey, to Scott. 61's in-depth analysis of how a Formula 1 pit crew can now complete a pit stop, including changing four tyres wow. in less than two seconds. I'm going to That's take a in-depth look at how these 23 team members all coordinate together to put together a perfect pit stop. And yeah, I'll nice. frame by frame footage to analyse the role of each individual member and the important role that they play during the pit stop. Now, pit stops have come a long way in the last 60 years. In the 50s and 60s, they used to take upwards of a minute to change some tyres and refuel the car. Yep. That's gradually come down, and as the rules have changed, we're down to now a two-second pit stop That's in modern-day Formula 1. Not only are there more team members involved in Formula 1 pit stops today, but they're more well organised, they train more, and they have better tools to help them get the driver back out on the track as soon as possible. Yeah, fair so, enough. As you can imagine, with 23 team personnel involved, it can get very complicated. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the, the whole crew and what each individual or group of team personnel actually does during the pit stop. All right. So we can see Felipe Massa coming into his pit box here and the uh, pit crew are about to crowd around the car and, and, and do their jobs. So. First of all, we have the two uh, the jackmen, the front jackman here, lifting the car, and the rear jackman here. Like before he even goes into it, you can see on the ground, I'll go back 10 seconds, you can see Next on the ground, have. right? So, the, uh, or maybe I'll go back 20 seconds, but there's the yellow lines and the white lines that are basic indications for the driver himself. You have to be in this spot, this is exactly where your car needs to be lined up for everything to work and everything, you know, by the looks of it. First of all, we have the... Let's go back a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. You can see the square box, you know? Here, and the uh, pit crew are about to crowd around the car and, and, and do their jobs. So, first of all, we have the two uh, jackmen. The front jackman here, lifting the car, and the rear jackman here. Next up, we have the groups of pit crew who are changing the tyres. We have three, although it's difficult to see here, on the oh, yeah. front left. We have... Three here on the front right. Yep. We have three here on the rear right, and three here, although one of them's hidden again, on the rear left. Then we have three for each uh, tire. a couple of pit crew to stabilise the car and clean anything if there's anything that needs to be fixed on okay. the car as well. We have two here in the middle of the car, and two here at the front. Yep. I'm and following. Then we have a couple of pit crew who are there to make sure that everything's finished and release the car and Felipe back into the pit lane and into the rest. So this gentleman here is, uh, is in charge of releasing the car and in charge of the traffic light that controls Felipe before he goes into the pit lane, as okay. well as this guy at the back. And obviously we can't forget the driver who has an important role of bringing the car into the pit lane and stopping it correctly on his marks. Yeah, there we go. Felipe in the centre of the footage here. Now we're going to go into detail of what each of the pit crew actually does okay. during the two-second nice. stop. 
So it may look like the driver just casually drives this is, into the pit lane. This is really cool, by the way. If there are other videos like this that you recommend I have a look into and that you want me to look into, let me know in the comments section. A link would be ideal, but it doesn't have to be. It can just be the title of the video. I know how to type. We're all good. Uh, but yeah, this is really good analysis. I like it. Stops and lets the pit crew get on with changing the wheels and tyres. But there's a lot of time to be made as you come into the pit lane and hitting your marks properly mm. when you do come to. Oh, I didn't see the white and ones there. The pit speed limit line as you come into the as you come into the pits. But the pit lane before that is actually still part of the racetrack, so you can really attack it. And the idea is to come along there as quickly as possible, break as late as you can before you go down to the pit speed limit, which is 80 kilometers an hour. Now, as you approach this um, area, you'll actually decelerate or, or slow down slightly. 80 kilometers in pit lane, why bother having a speed limit at that point? If someone gets hit at 80, they're fucked. But anyway. More than the 80 kilometers an hour um, speed limit. Now, the reason for this is just to be a little bit safe. Now, you'll probably only come down to 75, 77 kilometers an hour. Then you'll press the pit speed limit uh, button and then accelerate back up to 80 kilometers an hour. When you're coming into the, into the box, you're going slower than you've been at any point on the racetrack. Now, the, the pit lane can be uh, dirtier than the race circuit, it has less grip, but okay, also, and more importantly, you're driving the car with much less or zero aerodynamic uh, downforce than you have at all on the racetrack. So you right. have substantially less grip than you've been used to, and it I didn't realize that. take you by surprise. So here we are on board with Felipe Massa. Now, he's got the car slowed down, he's coming into, uh, into his pit stop, and you can see he's spotted his pit crew all the way up here. He begins to take the car from the, uh, the fast lane of the pit lane and bring it into the, the pit box area. Now he's focusing on getting the car slowed down, and you can see here actually there's a change in the in the um, surface of mm. the pit lane, it goes from asphalt on the left over here to concrete on the right. So obviously the concrete won't give you as much grip as the asphalt on the left, and that's mm. another consideration that you have to uh, to take in mind when this you're coming. It's a really good deep stop. dive. Yeah, absolutely. So at this point, all he's focusing on is the big white line in the middle to get the car line it up in the middle of the pit box. And these two uh, yellow and red markers here that the front two tire men are holding. Now, that's to mark where the center of the front wheels should stop exactly. And nice. that's what Felipe will be focusing on here to get the car stopped in exactly the right area so the pit crew had the easiest job to change the tires. Nice. So he's bringing the car into the middle, he's got it fairly well centered, and he stopped exactly on his marks. Then all the pit crew nice. go and do their job, they change the tyres and all Felipe will be doing now is holding the clutch in, making sure the car's in first gear and watching the traffic light on top here. At the moment you can see that it's red but as the pit crew change the tyres very quickly there, drop in and now it's gone to green. So as soon as that happens and it's... it's Exactly as the car comes literally down, as it hits the deck, uh, as it as it hits the deck, comes down onto the floor again. It's gone to green. He's released the clutch, and away he goes. And as you can see, I mean, it just all happens so quickly. So let's watch that again in full speed, so you can see from a driver's point of view how quickly it all happens. It's just absolutely that's incredible. insanity. So once the driver comes into the pit box and actually comes to a stop or almost comes to a stop, it's a, a, a frenzy of activity. Next up, we're going to take a look at the two Jackmen, or rather the four Jackmen who are there, ready to pick the car up so that the four. tires can be changed. So again, we're looking at this overhead view of Felipe coming into the pit box. Now, the people you need to look out for are just here. So we have the front Jackman, yeah. the spare front Jackman here, Ryan. the rear Jackman, and the spare rear Jackman who's just coming into shot Nice. Over here. So in case so the first one's fucked up. The reason that we have these spare jackmen is because the jacks are now getting more and more complex. In order to pick the car up and drop it um, very quickly, they have to have quick release systems. So if one of these gets stuck or it doesn't pick the jack up properly, um, they've got a spare just there to uh, to, to, to nip in and uh, pick the car up if needed. 
although Makes sense, the, I guess. Uh, the pit stop speed is incredibly important, actually doing it consistently is more important. If yeah. you make up a tenth on every single pit stop, but then in one of them you lose 15 seconds, well, that's going to cause a yeah, massive fucks you up on the race. So it's important that the team cover off any potential problems that they may have with the jacks or with any other part of the Makes pit sense. Stop. Let's just watch these guys as they come in. Let's watch the rear jackman back here. You can see he sweeps in, and the jack is actually at an angle as it as it goes in here. He picks up the rear of the car, and there we go. The, the spare rear jackman here isn't needed, but he's ready to go in if he wants to. If you watch here, so the yep. the rear jackman goes in, and then the spare's right there and ready to uh, ready to ready to go. Far out, it's precision, so isn't it? Let's take a look at the front jackman first of all. He's extremely brave because he's probably the he's only pit whacked. crew who, uh, if Felipe goes past his marks, is going to get injured and taken out by that front wing. So he slots the jack in, pushes down on the jack as quickly as possible. It then locks itself. He moves across to the left-hand side so that it's out of the way. So the jack will have a pivot on it. It's a very complex um, system. Wow, that's, yeah, that's an interesting piece of machinery. The, drops it with a quick release system and because he's already out of the way the jack just comes out and Felipe goes on his merry way. So if we watch that again we'll see that the spare jackman is here ready to go in if there's a problem Should with he the be front required, jack, yeah. but there's not so he just gets out of the way as quickly as possible then the front jackman drops it and Felipe's back out into the pit lane. So all in all that's I mean it's incredibly quick how it happens and I think when they practice the pit stops so these things just become natural they just happen so quickly that it becomes instinctive for the for the pit crew Absolutely. so next up we're going to take a look at the front wing pit crew the uh, middle of the car pit crew who stabilize it and the the rear wing pit crew so we're looking at uh, this guy this guy uh, these two in the middle Okay. And the one coming in and um, working on the rear wing there, which yeah. you'll see now. now. This uh, pit crew here. Nice. So let's take a look at the, the front two first of all. So these guys are here to make any front wing changes. Uh, if there's been any damage, they'll change the front wing. In this case, these two guys are making a front wing change. You can see that they're screwing something. Uh, on on the front wing. If there's nothing to do uh, on the front wing during the pit stop, they'll actually they'll move. clean the, the front wing no, because fair enough. any rubber gets between uh, the elements with them being so close nowadays and with them being like five or six different elements in the front wing. If any rubber gets in there, it can really affect the efficiency of the front wing. So they'll make any yeah aerodynamics fucking changes. matter. They'll change a damaged wing. Understatement of the year. They just clean the front wing here. Next up, we have the uh, two members of the pit crew in the centre of the car here. Now, in this case, they're stabilising the car. The, uh, the, the, the jacks that the team use are only very narrow. The contact patch with the car is very narrow. Okay. So if you're picking it up from two narrow points, the car can sometimes yeah. uh, wobble a little, a little bit. That does make sense. So they're there to stabilise the car. They're also there if there's any debris in the radiator. So they'll nip inside the radiator and they'll uh, pull out any debris that may be in the in the rad ducts. Nice. And finally we have the rear wing uh, pit crew member who is cleaning the main element of the rear wing again because it have, if it has aerodynamics any again. to it then it will become less efficient. And in the video here you can see that he's wiping it clean with some special gloves uh, before Felipe heads back out into the pit lane. So next up, we're going to take a look at probably the most exciting part of the oh, wow. pit crew who change the tires. Now, the first thing like, to look at is you. the machinery and tools that the pit crew actually use are completely different to those that you'd use to change a tire on your, your road car, for example. And it's something that's changed uh, massively in, the, in, in recent times in Formula 1. It was only 15, 10 years ago where we would have a, a hexagonal a wheel nut that you that you probably would recognise as being relatively normal. Now the no. problem with only having a, a hexagon to go onto is that it's quite difficult to get the gun if you fuck it onto up. the nut very quickly because there's a there's a, a lot of potential for a mismatch um, of the shapes. 
Now, what's happened in, in recent years is that there's many, many more sides or, or ways that the wheel can, can go onto the net. So they always manage to get the net on instantly, and basically. properly and quickly without messing around trying to find the right side for the gun. So with Makes great sense. tools, it means that the pit crew can do uh, an amazingly quick uh, pit stop and there's a lot less potential for a problem in the pit stop itself. So let's take a look at the footage now and we're going to take a, a close look at the three members of the pit crew that can change just one of the tyres. And don't forget we've got another three tyres around the car. So that's a yeah. total of 12 uh, pit crew members who are solely changing four tyres on the race car. So from the footage here, first of all you can see we're, we're on the front left, so you can see the, uh, the, the board that's showing Felipe where the front tyres should stop and that's what mm -hmm. we're looking at here. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. You can see the mar markings uh, on the floor here which show um, for analysis afterwards, which will be something similar to this, how well Felipe stops um, on his marks during the pit stop. The other thing to note is that you can see that all of the pit crew have all of their attention down here. So just mm -hmm. as when we're driving on track, it's important that you're looking a long way ahead of yourself. Well, these guys are all looking down the road, eyes fixated on the car that's coming. We don't want to get hit, right? And any of you who've stood next to a road, you'll know how quick 80 kilometers yeah. an hour feels when a car is approaching you. As you can see here, the first guy to move is the, the wheel nut guy and he's moved himself Tracking it across, in, following it in. Genius. Um, across to the right hand side here so that he can follow the wheel nut in and get on the wheel nut as quickly as possible. Yeah. So as the car comes in, look, he's moving himself forward in a sweeping motion and already now he's following the wheel nut perfectly. Mm, he's on it before he stops. Gets on it and he pulls the trigger and within a few moments, the wheel is now coming off. Coming off, the other it's one's already off. on its way in. The, the wheel nut guy has come off the, uh, the wheel nut here, and the, the wheel's coming off. Then the gentleman on the left here is putting the, uh, the new tyre back on, and you can see that he actually He's already takes his arm around yeah. the outside, and look at how close those two tyres are. One comes off, and we have... 10 or 15 centimeters difference here. Uh, so the, the That's impressive. the Williams Formula One team are so fine when we're changing the tires. How much do these guys get paid? Like are these all ex drivers or up and coming drivers? Like, or like, I mean, they wouldn't be, they'd be specialists in their role. You know what I mean? Like it's not just a, oh yeah, train and go and do this thing. Like they're getting it under two seconds. They'd be specialists, but do they get paid? How does it work? What's the system? Like, how do you learn how to change a tire? How do people go? Yeah. You've changed enough tyres in whatever, you can change tyres in this now, you know, up in Formula One. How do they get to be that good? The tyre goes on smoothly here. You can see just this small gap. Um, the, the wheel hasn't located quite as quickly as, as it could. Just watch it again. You see it comes on and there's just a moment. Oh, there's a little bounce, a yeah. Just there where it needs to locate and then he pushes the tyre on. Um, it's worth noting, and just going back uh, a few moments, just to watch the uh, the wheel gun pit crew again. As you're following the, uh, he's going the in as the tire goes he in. Follows the tire back into and onto the hub, and he's on it straight away, almost instantly. And this is how Williams consistently have the pit stop records during many of the Grand Prix. Yeah, they I just bet. work so seamlessly together and it all flows. Is the plural slightly. the Grand Prix Grand Prix? Then, once the uh, the wheel gun is done within the Grand uh, Prix of a second, Grand Prix is off and uh, and the car's on its way once again. So actually it's quite good to, to take note here. If you um, if we take the centre of the, the wheel as being here just they stopped very very well on his yeah. face, just a few centimeters off so the the pit crew haven't needed to to readjust and as you can imagine when they're in this position look at the knee pads they're, too. They're, they're on the on the ground in quite a, a strong position which they need to be to put the the forces 
uh, through the wheel nut and, and into the wheel to do it up tightly, it's very difficult for them to move. If he was, for example, you know, 20 or 30 centimetres... He'd have to take a knee, uh, half knee step. ...pit crew, he would have to kind of shuffle across, and that's going to take massive amounts of time. So let's watch that again from another view, just to see how quickly and well synchronized... That's the view you want. This is the view my wife loves in that car, like just the in and out. So the They're not doing fucking sub two seconds, the though. The guys who control the release of the car back into the pit lane. Now, it's an incredibly important role. So you can see here, and when we go through the footage, you'll see that they don't look like they're actually doing too much. We have the, the guy at the front. Um, on the right hand side of the screen and the guy at the rear who are just standing there like gnomes um, but they're taking in a lot of information and they're, mm. um, they're just as important. important to how quick the pit stop is if we first of all uh, take a look at the pick remember at the front of the shot here now he's controlling and looking out for when all of the pit crew are finished doing their jobs uh, if there's been any problems and when it's safe to allow Felipe back out of the pit box. Now, it's an incredibly difficult job because it all happens mm. so quickly and the margins are so Blink quiet. You miss so it. He's looking out for any problems, he's taking a, a, a wide view of the situation and he controls the, the traffic light that Felipe is looking for. So as we saw on the onboard footage, there's a traffic light here um, mm. and Felipe is just watching as soon as he stopped, he's just looking at this traffic light with the clutch in, ready to go as soon as he possibly can. And the, uh, the pick remember at the front right here is, is controlling that traffic light. So imagine his job in a two second pit stop is going to take in all this Everything, yeah. Try and see when everybody's done. Ensure that everybody's finished and there's no problems. If there's been a sticky wheel nut or something, maybe the, the pit stop's going to be a bit longer. Than normal, and he's got to watch out for that. And he's got to make that and call then, in the moment. The responsibility to set the light to green and release Felipe from the uh, the pit box. Now, as I said, it's very difficult, and the margins are so fine that if he's 0.5 of a second slow, mm. it's added probably 20 or 25 percent of time onto the pit stop. So High stakes. Can, just think about how quick half a second is. His his reactions have got to be incredibly fast and uh, he's got to absorb a, a massive amount of information. So he has a huge responsibility. Now, at the back of the car, we have another pit crew member who is controlling the release of the car. Now, a few mm -hmm. years ago, Formula One changed the rules whereby you can't release your car into the pit lane if there's another car coming along the pit lane. Now, so he's the one that says, with, yeah. A, a marker on the pit wall, and if another car is past this marker, you can't release your car into the pit lane. So he's the one that says, he's like, yeah, it's safety. good, it's good, it's good. If you release the car, no, there's another car coming along. Obviously, you have a, a big potential for, for a crash. And with so many people in the pit lane, you know, it's unsafe to do that. So Makes they, sense. they release this rule. And now you can't just release uh, your car into the path of another. So the uh, pit crew member at the back is just watching if, there's another car coming up along the pit lane and if there is and he's past the point that Williams can't release their car he'll override the pit crew member at the front of the car nice. and actually hold the traffic light on red for that bit longer until the other car has come along the pit lane here and then it's safe to release the Williams F1 and Felipe Massa back into the pit lane. Nice. So that's how 23 people work together seamlessly to change four wheels and tyres in less than two seconds. That's insane. I mean, it's just incredible yeah. that they managed to do this consistently Phenomenal. with such speed. So really well done to the Williams Formula 1 team. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the this video, please be sure to subscribe. We have many more Formula 1 videos and uh, driving tutorials. The evolution of cockpits, I might check that one out. .com website. And if you need any motorsport products, please be sure to check out the driver61.com store for all your motorsport needs. Thank you very much, nice. and I'll see you next time. Well, what a legend. I nearly just replayed the video, but I won't. We're all good. That was dope. That was really cool. Definitely, please, go and check that guy out. Hit the subscribe button for him, as well as me, if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, but, yeah, I really appreciated that. I feel like I learned a lot. 
I'm going to learn more about F1. I'm just going to react to a bunch of this guy's stuff, to be honest. That was really well made and that was really, it was a good, intelligent deconstruction that was actually, like you could tell he knew all the ins and outs and the technicalities of everything, but he dumbed it down enough that someone like myself, who has no fucking clue, understood perfectly what he meant. And now I feel like I have a richer experience, I will have a richer experience watching pit stops from now on across all motorsport because I'll be able to see, oh yeah, that bloke's doing that, that bloke's doing this. These are, you know what I mean? Like, that was really cool. I'm glad I watched that. Uh, thank you to whichever one of you it was that suggested it. I know someone did. Sorry, I can't remember who you are. But yeah, these guys are my patrons. Please consider becoming a patron of mine. I like money. Turning some of your money into my money would be fucking sick. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to get on with it and keep filming stuff, guys. I'll see you when I look at you. You'll see me when you look at me. Thanks for watching.